It's recording. It's recording. All right, uh, today, uh, me and Isaac went to Harold's Chicken Shack. I was kind of do just Jesus Christ, this is a lot of food. Um, I was kind of, uh, you know, cautious about doing this because I wasn't sure if it counted as fast food or not. But I decided, like, I reviewed Cookout. It's kind of like a similar local chain sort of thing, even if there isn't a drive through So I got a half dark meat. Um, comes with uh, the chicken, two pieces of white bread, truly a you know, classic. They seem a little bit superfluous with all the fries. Uh, this is a lot of food, but uh, some sort of sauce. Um, man, Jesus Christ, this was like six bucks too, holy shit. Um, Alright, well let's start with a fry before getting to the main. The fries have soaked up the sauce. They've been in my car for half an hour now. Um, they are not crispy. I am not, certainly not judging them on that. Um, they should not be crispy at this point. I do not expect them to be. Pretty good. Yeah, They're a little bit mealy, though. Um, yeah, this is a mealy batch. Try a piece of the bread with sauce. Good. Yeah. Tastes like the sauce. It's white bread. There's nothing special about this. Kind of like if Lem's barbecue but with chicken instead of beef. <laughs> Man, those bucks are beef kits will do it. Or was it beef or pork? I don't remember. Um, a little bit of, a little bit of skin. Mmm. Just that crispy fried goodness. Not too much of the sauce on that. Hint of salt and pepper. Mm. Yeah, this definitely has the affect of fast food. Probably say so myself. I'm probably misusing that word. Again, I'm still working through what affect means. Um, yeah. I don't know. Start reading some Benjamin again today. I'm really about to Owen. Sent me an essay on surre the surrealist movement. It's pretty cool. Mmm. Oh man, that little bite just has like a whole lot of grease in it. Alright. Mmm, that is really good. Mm. Chicken is well brined. You know, really just look at that. Mmm, dark meat. Juicy, the inside's flavorful, it's not just the skin giving it. Mm, oh yeah. But no, the surrealist stuff's kind of interesting. I was still trying to work my way through it. Benjamin's always kind of difficult to parse through. Because the language is still kind of like, it's not eloquent or whatever. But like, you know, kind of, it seems much more kind of like, uh, not abstract, but flowery, wishy-washy than it is, and kind of make you forget that Benjamin really is like a hardcore materialist. So, you know, just we're talking about that. Like, very aggressively affirms that, like, aesthetics and politics, aesthetics and, like, art and academia need to be very firmly rooted in sort of, like, economic and political conditions. Um, like parts of this article make kind of our essay make sort of an argument for us. Oh yeah, look at that. Mm. Mm, no cartilage. I thought there was some cartilage, but, but yeah. Um, make like the argument that like revolutionary intelligence yeah, needs like not only exist in the world of kind of metaphor and contemplation. Um, which is like kind of yeah, cotton thinking through kind of like overthrowing the bourgeoisie and you need to engage in the world of like politics and images. Um, I wasn't sure how this related to the surrealist movement, but it makes sense. It's kind of the reversal of like fascism being the aestheticization of politics and instead of politicizing aesthetics, I think in a deeper way than is done now with the like all art is political, but rather like you must engage. Like, good art comes from, con like, good art necessitates the artist or academic engaging in political and propagandistic work, but not of the, like, 
Oh yeah, let's move on to a drum set right now. Mm. I'm going to five stop that one. Drumsticks are great. They're so easy to eat. It's like just fucking corn on the cob, but it's meat. Um, like, sure, the wing is more flavorful. But it's just in the air. Hmm. It's a sauce. Oh, a tiny ass bit of slaw. That's mm -hmm. um, uh, mm. Classic mayo sauce. Again, I prefer vinegar. I think I've talked about that. Uh, no raisin cane one. But yeah, like, I don't know, the propagandistic aspect kind of differs from social realism, I think. And like, because he also kind of necessitates this, like, very firm definition of kind of like radical freedom. Which I think runs counter to making art for the purposes of a strict political program. And like, tries to have this weird middle ground that I think he says the surrealist did, but I could be wrong in this. Again, Still parsing through it, kind of indigestible. Which isn't bad. The big Fisher points that out for uh, Mmm. 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 Nice little tendon there. Nice and slimy. And not too tough. Oh, thank you, why is it just like that? Yeah. Mm hmm. Um. So, yeah, like. That freedom is worth, like, basically unlimited sacrifice, and when it exists, it needs to be utilized to its fullest extent without regard to, like, practicality, which I'm really partial to. Not because, like, it's a feasible program, but because that sort of, like, unattainable horizon, I think, is a good thing to kind of keep in mind. It helps make for a more humane sort of thing. Like, sure, as for a practical program, like the Green New Deal, which I kind of support. Oh, man, I'm fucking cleaning this off. Yeah, this has a really good balance. I wouldn't mind, like, I don't know, some, like, greens or something. Like, collard greens. Even though those really aren't much healthier for you most of the time. Just to, you know, like, color it up a bit. I feel coleslaw is normally more of a temperature thing. Like, the actual physical, like, coolness of it provides a pretty good balance to the rest of the meal. You know, I should have eaten this hot right when we got it. But <laughs> as is, like, it's still warm. Um... And so I think it's that sort of like, rather than like having a good taste, it's like very much texture and temperature. So like a good coleslaw is going to be cold and very crispy. Um, I think are the two kind of important aspects of it. But yeah, I don't know. I think that radical freedom, like the simplest sort of like motive behind revolution is liberation in every single aspect without a form of compromise is a good way to sort of look at it and avoid a lot of the traps of kind of like left nationalism and shit like that and like of course like you know fascism and national socialism oh i've always liked that ending a lot he always has the best ending lines too like this is the storm we call progress and um uh, like the surrealist when I trade every kind of like human image for the face of an alarm clock that rings for 60 seconds every minute. I have no fucking idea what that means, but it sounds really cool. Mm. Yeah, this is great. I'm glad I reviewed it. Um, this one wasn't on, sorry, Beck, this one wasn't on the list of like the 20 best heralds. Um, I don't know why. It is number 14. It is apparently number 14, in case you didn't hear Isaac say that. Harold's yeah. Chicken, number 14. Not, not number best 14. 20, number 14. <laughs> um, yeah. Excellent meal. Some of the best fried chicken I've had in a while. Wouldn't compare it to Raisin Cane, just because it's a very different style, not focused on tenders. But, like, I mean, it blows KFC out of the water easily, even Popeye's. Um... It still doesn't pop back home or back in North Carolina. I still call it see home. Uh, it is um, this place called Bonds. It's like this hole in the wall Chinese Vietnamese place. But it has like these fried, like spiky chicken wings that are incredible. Like they feel like they've been fried for like 48 hours. 
shorter crispy, shorter chewy, and like actually sweet and spicy. Or like for seven bucks for like a massive plate of like rice and it was like trading out it's like this much food but trading out the fries for the rice. Yeah. Mm. Overall I'd rank this pretty high. Yeah. Um, happy uh happy day. I think we're, I think we're good.